I'm going to talk to Jennifer Miller. He's going to call everybody. I'm going to call All right. Since the sun's kind of in their eyes, we'll go ahead and get started. And yep. We can get the new stuff up to deal. Just have Kaylin. Kaylin's going to moderate. Kaylin's going to moderate for us. Cool, perfect. We're going to get started, right? Yep. We're ready when you are. that you will hear from this evening truly embody the spirit and values of West Virginia. They're strong, dedicated, passionate, and certainly not afraid to tell you how they feel. I'm genuinely excited to cast my vote this November because for once we do not have to choose between the lesser of two evils. We have incredible candidates on the ballot from top to bottom, and we can finally vote for people who are de devoted to making a significant di difference here in West Virginia. Now, I don't know about you, but I am sick of our state being sold out to the highest bidder back the corrupt politicians that only care about their own self-interest. I'm tired of being sold out, manipulated, and left behind by our elected officials. I'm tired of watching my neighbors struggle to make ends meet while these very politicians continue to profit off the pain of our community. This has gone on for long enough. We truly have an extraordinary opportunity in front of us. We can change the narrative. We can elect everyday West Virginians to office, and we can work to build a future that allows all of us to not just survive, but thrive. I trust these candidates to make the right decisions because they're only beholden to us, the voters. They've refused to take corporate and corporate PAC money that has corrupted our current elected officials and caused so much anguish and devastation in our communities. I have faith in these candidates just like I have faith in West Virginia. We can build an equitable and diverse economy. We can legalize cannabis. We can have access to quality health care. We can protect the natural beauty of our state and still have sustainable, well-paying jobs. These things are possible, but we have to elect the right people to office to make it happen. And the people you hear from today are those right people. So our first candidate of the evening is someone that I have great love and respect for. She's been fi a fighting force to preserve the natural beauty of our state for decades and has led the charge for access to clean water for all West Virginians. Her passion and dedication to the people of this state is simply unmatched. So I'm thrilled to introduce my friend and our Democratic nominee for the United States Senate, the formidable Paula Jean Swearingen. This is the heart of labor. 
everybody should be able to have a living wage. They should have a right to collectively bargain. And we've seen in 2018 our teachers rising up just like our ancestors did, like Mother Jones, Joe Hill, the miners of Mate One, Blair Mountain. And we've seen after the teacher strike so many people run for office. We had a whole slate of candidates, 93 candidates, that swore off corporate and corporate PAC dollars. We had 43 of those candidates to win the races. Right now here in West Virginia, we're at a pivotal time. It's been 100 years since women were allowed, were, had the right to vote. This is the first time in West Virginia history that we every Democratic nominee for Congress is a woman. They're progressive, and they are not taking corporate and corporate PAC dollars. We have some incredible candidates all across the state. We do have choices for a change, like Kaylin said. And right now, one thing about West Virginians, it doesn't matter about partisan politics, we stick together. And another thing about West Virginia women, we are sending a clear message that if you mess with our young, we're gonna fight back. And that's why I decided to run for office, because I, I'm in this for my children and my grandchildren. And I'm ready to take, go with Hillary and the other three women in Congress and boss the hall wide open and let them know that West Virginia is going to have a seat at the table. Thank you. Rich. 
yet we have been left behind again and again. We have been ignored by a corrupt political system that hasn't cared about the needs of working families. They have allowed for a small group of people to control our economy and stifle our growth. They have refused to fix roads, pay our teachers a decent salary, or even provide for clean water and basic sanitation. It's time that we have real representation in government and elect leaders who understand the day-to-day -day struggles of the people and are willing to listen to our needs. We are all tired of politicians who are bought out by powerful corporations, and we know that we can have an economy that works for all of us, where a living wage is the norm. We can have good paying jobs and clean water. We can have well paid teachers and make sure that health care is a human right. I am not another millionaire politician. I come from a working class family of farmers, veterans, teachers, nurses, and social workers. People who are dedicated to service. I've worked as a teacher and in health care, and I'm a mother. I will be dedicated to serv serving the people of West Virginia to build the future that we deserve. This is about so much more than politics. I want my daughter and your children to grow up in a place where they have access to clean water, a stable environment, a quality education and guaranteed health care, a thriving community and a chance to follow their dreams. My opponent, Carol Miller, does not have a clear vision for West Virginia's future. She has been serving herself, not us. She has been in Congress for two years. And in that time, she has done little more than to cut the black lung fund for retired minors and use a health crisis to funnel millions of taxpayer dollars into her family business. While voting against aid to working families who are struggling to pay rent, feed their families, or afford health care. Her platform says nothing at all about health care or how she will help more West Virginians have access to health care. How is it okay for her health care costs to be covered by the taxpayers, but then she wants to leave her constituents to fend for themselves? Do y'all think that's right? No. No. Access to quality health care is something every American deserves, and this pandemic has made that crystal clear. Poverty should not be a death sentence. I support universal health care because I believe it is a human right. Every year, 68,000 Americans die due to lack of access to health care, and hundreds of thousands go bankrupt because of inadequate insurance coverage. This is completely unacceptable. I will continue to push for universal health care sure, to make sure that all Americans get the care that they need. In West Virginia, we need to also protect and expand our rural medical facilities and make sure that all of our people have access to emergency medical care. I believe in a world where all of us get to go to a doctor when we need to, and not just for emergencies, but for dental and mental health care, as well as preventative and integrative care. What many politicians in Washington don't get is that there are real life consequences to the policies they pass. I lost my mother when I was just eight days old. I lost her as a result of a medical system that does not treat patients in a comprehensive and integrative way. I know what it's like to grow up in a non-traditional family and some of the struggles that come with that. The first year of my life, I was, taking care, I was mostly taken care of by my grandparents. So many kids in, in West Virginia are growing up without one or more, one or both of their parents, mostly because of the opioid epidemic that has ravaged our state. In some West Virginia counties, half of our children are being raised by grandparents. Many of us have lost someone to the opioid epidemic. A year ago, I lost my sister. The kind of pain that causes a family is indescribable. We know that the pharmaceutical industries intentionally, intentionally flooded West Virginia with an outrageous amount of opioids and intentionally got our people addicted. They profited off our pain and guess what? Carol Miller still has stock in these pharmaceutical companies. Is that right? No. Enough is enough. We need to hold them accountable. We need to make them pay for the damage they cause and fund addiction treatment facilities here in West Virginia. I am committed to helping our communities heal 
and grow more stable so that we can keep families together and prioritize our children. Our children also have the right to a quality education and our teachers deserve respect and higher pay. Our young people should be able to attend college without crippling debt and we urgently need student loan forgiveness. But let's talk about the stark reality of sending our kids back to school right now during a surging pandemic. It's a gamble. I'm not willing to gamble with the lives of children, teachers, or our families. West Virginia has a very high risk population and our children being raised by grandparents can't afford to lose them. We've had a few examples of summer camps where this virus spread like wildfire. And at least 72 children have died from COVID nationwide. Many people who recover from mild cases are left with brain damage and heart damage. We need to put the lives and safety of our children first. Our event today is outdoors. And because of state mandates, we had to limit attendance to 25 people, even though we are spread out and outdoors. Yet, our government wants to send children back to schools where hundreds of children will be inside of one enclosed building. Teachers have a very difficult job, but what we are demanding of them now is nearly impossible. To keep large numbers of children together inside of a poorly ventilated building safe from COVID and keep themselves safe. Many teachers have spoken out and are demanding that we wait until it's safe to reopen our schools. I will continue to stand with our teachers and with the science. For now, we need remote learning and we need to make sure that all families have a computer and internet access. We need to find ways to connect children with individual support when they need it and provide support for childcare. We also need a universal basic income so that families aren't starving or being put out on the streets. Nobody should be evicted during a pandemic. Beyond education, we have to consider the kind of world that our children will inherit. My family has a farm in Greenbrier County. We've had it there for six generations, and four years ago, we were hit with a once in a thousand year flood where we were stranded on the farm for three days as the valley in front of the house became a lake. Hundreds lost their homes and 23 people died. Last spring, we had flooding so bad that many farmers were not able to plant their crops. Then later in the summer, we had a drought so bad that West Virginia had to declare a state of emergency. My grandma said that she was worried because she had never seen things so dry and the springs on the land were drying up. Even the Greenbrier River was totally dry in some places. We've got to think about our children's futures. But here's the thing, we can have a strong economy and address climate change and protect our land and water. We need to rebuild our economy in a way that is sustainable and diverse. If we legalize hemp and cannabis production, it can be highly profitable for our small farmers and beneficial for restoring old mine sites. Our economy can be diverse and grow. We can attract new and sustainable businesses to West Virginia if we invest in education, fix our roads, and expand broadband access. We can protect the natural beauty of this state and still have sustainable, well-paying jobs. Our country is heading in the direction of clean energy, and West Virginia has huge potential for generating energy from wind on our mountain ridges. We also have great potential for harnessing geothermal power. We should be on the forefront of renewable energy production and installation. I support the Green New Deal because it would bring a huge investment of jobs right here to West Virginia in clean energy and infrastructure. I also support the Reclaim Act. This would commit $1 billion to help clean up abandoned coal mines that are polluting the water all over southern West Virginia. For immediate job growth and allow for long-term and locally driven economic development for areas devastated by negligent coal companies that have left us behind. Access to clean water should not be a partisan issue, but Carol Miller has managed to make it one and has refused to support the Reclaim Act, which would do nothing but help our district. At the end of the day, this election is about all of us deciding what how, what we want to create for our futures. It's time we focus on prosperity for all West Virginians, not just a select few. It's time that working families in West Virginia have representatives that will work for them. We have an opportunity to heal our communities and grow West Virginia to be a place where our children want to stay and raise their families and they can
can thrive. Thank you for your support and I hope to be able to work with you to accomplish this. I'm proud to stand here today with Helen Jean Swearjen, who's a powerful fighter for justice here in West Virginia. And I know she'll make a great senator for the United States. congressional district, but they are not standing up for West Virginia's women. We need women who will represent us. We need women who will stand up for affordable child care, affordable health care, to make sure that we cut the malarkey uh, with our COVID funding, and that we make sure that we heal our communities, that we keep our teachers safe, and that we make sure that our essential workers are not treated as disposable workers. We really need to protect them. Um, thank you. I'm running in District 17, which is uh, parts of Huntington in Cabell and Wayne counties. And my priority, the reason I'm running, is because I worked. I have worked for years in child abuse prevention and child mental health, and those are issues children in my church for decades. And we need somebody. Desperately need people in our state house that their decisions are going to be based on what's the best thing for the well-being and the health and the safety of our children. And we are not seeing that happening right now. Um, we need to fully fund and implement solutions to our opioid crisis. We need to heal our communities. We need to increase our connections. And the third reason that I'm running is that um, I'm a feminist from way back, and I, I think that's a good word. And uh, we need to look at the income discrepancies in our state. And when you look at who's bearing the load of poverty, um, these are our care workers, our social workers, our librarians, our teachers, our health, you know, all of our health care workers and our nurses. These are people who are in predominantly female professions, and they have been shortchanged for way too long. And we need people at the federal level. We need people at the state level and the local level to make sure we have good health care, that we have livable wages, because our poverty, um, you know, our children in poverty are children of mothers who are trying to make it on way less than they deserve to make. And we need, we need a full, uh, you know, a full attack, you know, from the federal and from every level. And I want to tell you that we have some fantastic candidates running in the city of Huntington. Uh, we have a diverse, progressive slate of city council candidates on the Democratic ticket, um, and we need to get people out to vote. So I'm just going to ask you to make sure you ask your friends to vote. Make sure that they vote for Hillary Paula. Make sure that they vote for Joe Biden for president. I'm a national delegate for the Democratic Party. We need to go from the bottom to the top to elect blue, true blue Democratic candidates that care about West Virginians. So thank you so much for this opportunity, and please support Hillary and Paula Jean. Don't don't handicap, you know, the vote. Vote with your heart. Vote with your conscience, and tell your friends to do the same, and we can win. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we want to open it up to any other 
candidates that might be here or elected officials? Working together and making sure that West Virginians have a seat at the table for a change. 